Now we will prepare the y-axis belt. Take a belt clamp with threaded inserts and place it below this part of the carriage. Give it a few twists on the screw to secure it. Take the second one and secure it on this sliding portion. We will use six millimeter belt to attach the bridge motor on the y-axis to the carriage. Pass it through from this side and place it between the gap in the pulley and the support rod. Clamp it on this side Pull the belt around the tensioner pulley. And up. If you have trouble getting it around the pulley, try pushing it through at an angle. Feed it back through, secure it on the other side. Once it is secured, we'll tension using the same way that was done on the z-axis. Be sure to allow access to the tensioner through the handle hold. Push the rod, the four millimeter shaft, into the pulley. Do this before tensioning the y-axis. If it does, does not fit, or you're having difficulty aligning it, you may want to get under it with an Allen wrench to force it into place. Repeat this procedure for belt attachment and tensioning for the x-axis. We'll use these larger tensioners. They go under the axis here. Be sure to secure them once they're attached using the square nuts and 632 attachments. This will ensure that they can take higher tension than the other belts. 
Once they're aligned and tensioned, secure the pulleys on the rear drive shaft using their set screws. Next, we'll apply the feet to the chassis. Take the unit and turn it over. Place the feet into the insert and twist until they're about halfway in. That will allow you later to level the printer. Now we will attach the displacement tool to the chassis. Take the spacer plate and the back plate of the tool and align them so that the small holes in the spacer plate line up with the small holes in the back plate. Using the 2.5M screws, place them through, attach them to the carriage, and secure them tightly. Once the base plate is secure, attach six of the square nuts in these locations. Then take the tool and mount it to the back by sliding it over the back plate and using the six 32 screws, attach it in six locations. Take the snap hub and place it into the slot provided. The rubber feet will provide some resistance, so you'll have to push past them. The slots on the bottom will allow easy access to everything on the bottom of the hub. Use Cat5 cabling that either you provide or came with the snap motors. Port 1 should be for the X axis, port 2 for the Y, port 3 for the Z axis. Four and five are used for tool bays zero and one respectively. To wire the entire apparatus, take the Cat5 cabling, place it in until it snaps, and then take the other end and snap it into the motor. For ease of cabling, four holes have been provided on the back plate that will allow you to zip tie your wires together. Additionally, a hole has been provided on this part of the bridge to allow cables which go to the tool to be attached easily. To attach motor cables to the tool, go from underneath and clip into the tool head. Then take the cable and wind it up so it slides in between the front plate of the carriage and the back plate of the tool. Bring the two together for each tool, zip tie them or secure them there, and then bring the wires around into the hub. Using this procedure, you can wire the entire fab at home. I hope you have fun with your Model 2 fab at home. Thank you.